Okay, so welcome to the stream. I'm going to be I'm going to be creating a new show from scratch, uh, and yeah, just getting everything done, creating it all in the viz, showing you how exactly I build it all, and then you can send in your questions, and I'll attempt to answer them at the same time, so that we can get some uh, some good stuff going. Uh, right, so I've I've drawn up a little plan, a little stage design in my little notebook here. So we're gonna we're just gonna get cracking with that. Oh, but first, let's get a new show. Normal. So there we go. Let's see, we've got everything's empty right now. So let's go ahead and import my settings. Uh, there we go. Let me just check that that is actually the latest, because I'm pretty sure I've got my encoders set. Yeah, so I've got my encoder mode to maintain pause color beam. Uh, for now, I might change that back to normal just so I can have some intensity control. Uh, because when you've got when you've got encoder mode set to maintain pause color beam, that means whenever you hit the groups window, uh, your well, whenever you in the position window, your encoders will be on tilt and pan. If you go back to groups, it will stay on tilt and pan. So you can be selecting groups whilst your encoders still do all your pan and tilt. So that's why I do that because it's it's easier to quickly select groups and change um, all the different attributes without having to go back into the window after having clicked on the group. But for now, since we're starting a new show, I'm going to keep it on normal so I can select groups and put intensities into the programmer like that. Uh, okay, so I think we're ready to patch some lights, maybe. Uh, actually, let's go into the viz first. Let's make this light so we can see what's going on. Uh, this is this is just the the standard box that comes with it. Um, so let's let's put in a stage. So if we go to uh, attach objects, go insert. Uh, we're going to put in uh, form. I think it is. Yeah, form cube. Uh, so by default, it starts off with nothing. So you'll see nothing is up in the viz. So if we give that. If we put five in everywhere, you can see now we've got a cube in here, just kind of sitting in the middle of space. So let us now move this cube. Well, let's make it a good size. So we want, let's get a good view of what's actually going on with this cube. Length, 10, I actually don't want that. I think I might want eight meters deep. 10 meters. Wow, how big is this room? Actually, let's, let's, in, let's insert a room first so that we can actually confirm our room size. Uh, so that's length. Let's make our length 30, our width, yeah, width 20, height 15. Yeah, sure, why not? Okay. Ooh. Now let's so change this cube to be width 20, maybe. Let's put that on the floor. It's definitely too high. Okay, so that's one meter. So 1.8, that's about the height of a person. So let's make this room a bit lower. Yeah, that seems... Maybe I'll go 12. So let's make the stage height 1.5, which is about right for a stage. We are 8 meters deep. We are pretty wide. Let's go 15. I want a 12. Okay, yeah, I think I'm happy for that as my stage size. So let's move it back. Minus 10. Yeah. Okay. All 
Right, so now I'm going to try and put my design in here. So we've got the stage. Let's call this stage. Uh, let's just take room one. Room. Model. Interesting. Um, okay, let's now put in some bits of truss, I think. So what have I got here? So I've got a whole bit of truss going along the front. Truss there. Straight truss. Uh, let's call this main truss. Length 12. Yeah, 12 seems about right. Where is it? It's currently uh, down stage 52, 52. Let's bring it down a bit. That's a bit too low, really. Eight. We are going to want it to be a bit high, I think. So we want this to be... Do I want this to be back or forward? I think I want this to be forward, but maybe not that forward. I'm going to put it minus eight, minus nine. Yeah, I think something like that. So this is where I'm going to hang a few lights off, some atomics, some blinders. Let's put another truss in. Let's call this back truss. Now I think what's going to hang off this is mainly scaff bars dropping down to have other lights rigged onto those. Uh, so yeah 12, that, that seems alright. Let's put this at minus 10, maybe minus 12, maybe minus 13. And we will drop it down a bit. Oh, disappeared. Uh, yeah, let's put that in 10 actually. Screw it. Okay. So we've got our two trusses in. We've got our stage. Now let's try and put these little bits of scaff bar in that I've got down. So let's go pipe. We want to change the rotation of this. I can never remember which way around these are. Not that one. Not that one. So let's copy that one. So we've got so I've I've got six pipes coming down from this top truss. So I'm can you do copy? No. Don't think you can. Let's just insert, oops, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Not truss, remove. So let's go insert pipe, insert pipe, insert pipe, insert pipe, insert pipe. One, two, three, four, five, six, six pipes. Uh, oh, length five. We won't have them all at length five. It's going to be slightly different, but just for now. Huh, that's interesting. That pipe is clicking, clipping. If you can see this, this pipe here is clipping through the ceiling, even though everything is set to be in the same place. Good old, good old uh, canvas visualizer. Okay, let's. So I think I, I want something like this. I think this is what I want. And then I'm going to have them spread over the truss. So to get them to be separated out equally, you you can do the syntax like this. If you press minus five through, through being the, uh, the greater than symbol, minus five through five, 
so then it's got them spread nicely from minus 5 through to 5. So you can see now in the viz they are nicely spread out, which is almost just what I want. But actually I've got it put in that there should be a gap where there would be two extra. So I'm going to do a little hack, insert a couple more pipes, set this to be minus five through five. Change those to 90 just so I can see what's going on. And then I'm going to remove pipe four and pipe five. So now I've got a nice gap in the middle where two pipes would be. So we've got three, two, one. That should be one, two, two, three. Yep, uh, okay, now let's just move them down. Eight. Let's go seven. That looks about right. So that needs to go eight, nine, nine. Okay, now they just need to all move back to be coming off of this other truss, which is at minus 13. Okay, yeah, that's looking like the beginning of something that could be cool. So now in the design, I've got that exact same kind of pipe layout, but coming up from the floor as well. So I wonder if I can do this. Can I set this? Oh, can I say uh, pipe four? No, it doesn't automatically. So pipe five, pipe six. Okay, now let's insert six more. Or I'll do I'll do eight more just to copy what I did before. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's flip them around, 90, uh, that's going to be 3, 3, oh no, 2, 1, these can be 1, because those, these two pipes are going to get deleted, this is just so I can spread them out nicely, so we want to go from minus 5 through 5 and put them on the floor. Where are they? Y position. If we go 1.5, because that's where the stage starts. And we will move them back to uh, maybe minus 10. Mm. No, maybe we'll go minus 12. Oh, I'm in the wrong window. Minus 12. I could spread them a little bit as they are on the floor. I'll, I'll keep it like that for now and see what it's looking like. So let's remove these two. Okay. So we've got it looking it's looking pretty much like what I have on my design. So now that means it's time for us to start putting in some lights. Start throwing some lights on truss. So I've put down a whole load of pointies, a whole load of other spot fixtures. Uh, I've got how many atomics? Six, 12, 16 atomics. This is a bit ambitious. 16 atomics, then we've got three blinders up top, a handful of washers, it's mostly pointies, doing nice pointy stuff. And there's quite a lot of stuff dotted about on the stage as well, right front. So, let's go into view heads, and let's start choosing heads. So let's go choose head. Uh, we will go into, on this soft button here, you can scroll through different filters of lights. So patched would be what lights you've got patched in. Live, this is a, a folder of regularly used lights, so you don't have to 
scroll through everything to find it. Uh, so you can go, film and TV is quite self-explanatory. We're going to stick with live for now. Let's go Roby, uh, point T. I'll go mode one, because a lot of people put them in mode three, just because it's got more channels. But those six extra channels are just timing channels, which I've never used. And you can, from my experience, you can do that kind of thing from the desk, setting timings in the desk. So I, I just happily go in mode one, save those six extra channels. Uh, okay, so now I count how many pointers I've actually put on this rig. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So we've cho chosen our light. Now if we go patch it, if we put 20 and then enter, it will just automatically just start patching them from the first available channel. So it will be putting them in universe one, channel one. So patching first said, ought to insert into visualizer. Yes. So now if we go and view viz, viz heads, you can see they've been put into the visualizer. Don't know why they are appearing here though. What happens if we, oh no, I've not got auto palettes enabled. That was silly. So if I go back into patch, view heads, let's go auto palette, make group position and color to be on. And then the trick you can do is instead of repatching these heads, if you go into edit head and then regen palettes, I think oh, it does everything apart from for the group but the group isn't too bad. I can oh, I can just select everything. Oh, you can't do that. Can you do this? Can you highlight them all? Press enter. Yes, you can. You can see on, in the top of this window here, I've, it's got all the lights selected from one to 20. So I know that they're selected. I can go record, type pointy, ooh. Ooh, I've got a little full stop there. That's annoying. Pointy, oh, select them, locate. Huh, they're not appearing in the viz. Ah, we'll figure it out. Let's see where they are. Let's kind of have a look in patch. Viz, huh, they've all been attached to the last thing I put in. If you want to attach them to nothing, I'm guessing you can just highlight and press enter. And there we go, they're attached to nothing. Let's, let's just see what happens if I put minus eight through eight. It could be that they are, oh uh, yeah, Y position is at minus five. There we go. So now you can see them all. They were just below the floor. <laughs> so that's all my pointies. If I highlight them, locate, there they all are. So now let us start putting them in positions. Uh, patch. So we've got them all in. I'm going to worry about doing universes later. For so to pre if we were to pretend that this was an actual show, then I would be separating the universes out. Uh, to be probably one universe for this front truss, one universe for this back section up here, one universe for the floor and the rest of that. It might end up being two universes for the floor because of the amount of fixtures I'm going to have going on. But we'll, we'll come to that later. Also, I'm using the old version of the uh, visualizer, the old rendering, because I don't know if my computer's going to handle the new uh, the new rendering engine plus streaming. So we're just going to stick with that for now. It works. I think that's, that's, that's all you need. Um, so yeah, we'll worry about doing DMX universes later. Let's just start positioning lights. So 
I've only kind of my my diagram I've written. I've just put in letters down in places where I think would be cool. So let's try and I'm gonna try and think of a better way. Oh, I might have miscounted my number of pointies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Yeah, I've actually got twenty-four. Okay, so let's add four more. Let's just go. Oh, where am I? I'm in Vivius. Patch it. Press four. Bam. That's four more. Sorted. So now I've got a universe and a bit worth of pointies going on. Nice. All right. Vivius. Now let's start placing some lights. I feel like this shouldn't be a thing. I feel like it shouldn't automatically attach to the last object you placed. Hmm. So if we press enter on that, unattached. Okay. Let's put this one in position. So this is going to take a while. There we go. Uh, so we're going to want the height of these first two to be eight, maybe ten. Yeah, 10, I think it's the same height as that truss. So 10, and then we want it to be about minus three. Where have I got it? I've got it pretty much between these two, these two bits of scaff. Those bits of scaff are two and three, minus three, five, seven, minus two, one, four. So that's the difference of 1.3, no, 1.43, so 0.72-ish on top of that, so about minus 2.8, I'm going to go minus 2.9, minus 2.9, okay, uh, I might edge it a bit closer. Maybe my maths was a bit off. I think let's go that. So we'll put that one at 2.85. It might have looked off just because they're slightly separated. But they're at minus 13. Yes. OK, that's two lights in position. So now the next eight are going one at the bottom, bottom of each pole, two in the middle here. In that case, it might be good to have these ones on the outer. Ah, we'll see how it goes. So we're going to put the height of this at six, seven. Yeah, seven for that and eight for that one. And nine for that, nine, eight, seven. These should all be, oh, I forgot the middle two. Uh, one, two, three. That's got to be ten. Ten, nine, eight, seven. There we go. All at minus 13. Let's check the attach objects. So minus, well, we know the minus fives. Oh, God. So that's minus five. That's five. That's the wrong one. That's five. objects three five seven oh, I keep doing that minus three point five seven three point five seven two one four two one four two 
2.14. And then these next two, it's looking like we're 1.43. So 1.43 off of that is 1.14. 0 0.74, 0 0.71, 0 0.71, 0 0.71. OK, yeah, I think that looks good. So now the next eight are the same as that, but flipped. Oh, I should have just done minus 5 through 5. That was, that was dumb. Well, the next eight, I can do that. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So let's go minus five through five. Nice and spread. Uh, that height. Oh, we need to flip them upside down as well. Four, two. Ooh. No, three. That's two. That's two, three, four. And we're slap bang on it. So now let us flip these upside down. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nope, that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 180. Yes, that is the upside down that I want. Uh, I just now have to bring them down how high they are, if that makes sense. 4.5. Yeah, that works if I, so does that mean I can highlight these all and go, can I go star minus 0.5? No, no. <laughs> 3.5, 2.5, 1.5, 1.5, 2.5, 3.5, oh, that's already 3.5, uh, 4.5. Awesome. All right, that's the next eight done. Oh, I've got one here, which is just hanging out in the middle of nowhere. That one, minus 13. Uh, I think I've counted my lights wrong still. How has this happened? No, I haven't. I've got six left to do. They're just, those four are under the stage. That's why I can only see two up here. Okay, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. That makes sense. So I'm going to put these are all upside down as well because they're on the floor. Their height is all going to be at 1.5. Uh, so they're starting not that far over there, minus 6, minus 5.5, five, five, five. yeah, I like minus 5.5. Five, five, five. Uh, the others, these two are going to be 5.5. Five. And then this is going to be uh, me putting these values in quite rough. Minus two, three, two, maybe. Yeah, yeah, that looks roughly about right. <laughs> um, so these need to be at the front of the stage. Let's make that maybe minus seven, minus six. Let's go minus seven. And then, oh, they're all at minus seven, really. And those are at maybe minus 10. Actually, maybe it's minus 9. Minus 9.5. Minus 9.5. Okay, sweet. So that's all the pointies in the rig. Let's just have a quick little play on them. See how they're working. Oh, look. When I patched, when I patched that other four pointies in, it made a pointy group. That's fun. I wonder what the selection order it gave it was. Uh, so it's normal. So it just went 
Yeah, normal. All right. Let's locate. And let's maybe make this beam a whole load tighter so we can see what's going on a bit more. Bring everything out. Okay, so all my units which are up in the air are tilting the wrong way from what I want. And the units on the floor are panning the wrong way from what I want. So let's quickly invert some stuff. So it's the top stuff I want to tilt invert. Next one. Oh, not that. There we go. So now the top ones are panning and tilting the right way. The bottom ones are panning the wrong way. So I need to just do that. And now, ooh, pretty. Some might say that's too many lights. You can always turn them off. Something I think would be cool in in the visualizer would be if you could edit what your uh, field of view angle was, because with a wider field of view, you could you could get f more zoomed in and still have a really nice perspective. But you can't, so you're stuck with you're stuck with what seems fairly flat. There we go, that's straight out. Uh, anyway, let's patch the next set of lights, which uh, we'll put in some spots, some nice spots. Let's, what could we use for that? Let's uh, have a look and see what kind of fixture we might want to use for some spots. Uh, choose head. Staying live. I quite like some of the clay packy spot stuff. Hmm. The Senius is pretty good. The um, Axe Core. Axe Cores are quite new and cool. I think I might go with Senius. Senius spot. Senius profile. Unico. What's the difference between spot and the Unico? So we've got 32 and 36. Well, your yeah, well, Unico has only got one gobo wheel, according to that, I'm guessing. That's got two. But that's got more channels. I don't know what the difference is between them. Can I... I'm going to select it. If I put it in vector, and then if I go... So we've got it selected, you can see up here. If I go edit head few channels you can see what channels you've got going on so we've got CMY dimmer rotate gobo we've got two rotatable gobos an animation wheel prism frost focus fair amount of stuff this is the senior spot so let's go choose head clay packy Let's have a look at Unico. Edit head channels. Uh, okay, so this has got framing shutters, framing blades. That's why it's got more channels. Yeah, so we're not going to use the Unico because effort and plus the visualizer won't be able to do it. I'm pretty sure, even if I did have it in the newer rendering engine but correct me if i'm wrong on that uh so choose head clay packy we we're going for the spot uh vector is going to have those weird timing channels don't want those so let's count how many i've got here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen well, let's go yeah, patch it, 18, 
So they are patched from the first available channel that they can, which was 73 on Universe 2. And here they all are in the visualizer, and they're automatically on point 14 again. That's the thing. I haven't attached all these pointies to their respective um, things they should be attached to. So those first two were on... Oh, I put them on the wrong one. I think. Yeah, they should be on the front truss. So that needs to be minus 10. Nope. Minus nine. There we go. And they're being attached. Oh, damn it. Main truss. Main truss. Uh, the next eight. Yeah, the next eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is getting attached to... Well, some of them are on the pipes. But I, the pipes aren't going to move... I wish you could, can you attach pipes to, you can, I'm going to attach these pipes to that truss, one, two, three, four, five, six, I'm going to attach those pipes to back truss, and then I'm going to attach those lights to that pipe, to the respective pipes, so pipe one, Pipe two, pipe three, pipe four. Nope, that needs to be back truss. That needs to be back truss. Pipe four, pipe five, pipe six. And then the next ones are the next pipes. So pipe seven, pipe eight, pipe nine, seven, eight, nine. The next ones are attached to the stage, and then I need to rename these pipes. Pipe 9, pipe 10, pipe 11, pipe 12. Uh, pipe 9, pipe 10, pipe 11, pipe 12. Okay. Back to here, stage, pipe 10, pipe 11, pipe 12. And then the next six pointies are attached to the stage. So now if I were to move any of these objects that these lights are attached to, the lights will move with the object which is handy if you have to move stuff. So if I if I were to move my back truss, I really hope this works. If I were to say bring this a bit to the right, you see all of those lights shifted along with the truss. If I move it back to the center, everything moves back to the center. That's great, that works. That's good to know. Uh, I could then attach those things to the stage, so if I move the stage, but I don't think that's going to be necessary. But right now, I've just got to get these spots now attached to everything. So let's make them visible by not having them under the floor. Whoa, okay. They're all off to the side. That's quite funny. Uh, let's... Just spread these a little bit. Minus five through five. There they all are. Six. All right. So I've got two up on that main truss. So let's go attach. Uh, attach main truss. And then I've got one on pipe one, three, four, and six. One, three, four, six, and then seven, nine, ten, twelve. Seven, 
9, 10, 12, and that should leave 8 for the front. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yep. Set. Can I just press enter here? No, because that blanks it, doesn't it? Set uh, stage. Okay. So these are put slightly wider than those pointies. So uh, I think I'm going to put them right at the base of that second pipe. And that second pipe is at minus 357. So if I put minus 3.4, uh, minus uh, 3.57 through 3.57. And then change the height. What was it at? Was it at 9? 10? 10. Okay. And then it needs to go back to minus 13. Uh, it's kind of intersecting that pipe. It's kind of going right through those pipes, which is quite funny. I guess in the real world you would have these pipes rigged on the back of the truss and these lights rigged to the front. And it could probably still fit in. But I do also want to be rigging... I do want to be putting some LED batons along these pipes as well. I might have to shift some things around. Let's let's leave it for now. I'll cross that bridge maybe later. Uh, right, so that's those hung. The next two. Oh no! Wait. They're going on the main truss, though. Okay, my diagram isn't clear enough for me to be doing this clearly. Eight. No, they've just zoomed forward. Minus eight. Minus eight. Minus nine. Minus nine. Okay. In that case, I might uh, gonna place them a little further right. Minus four, three, four. Yeah, I like that. So that's those spots done. So now let's do these pipe spots. So this first one is drawn as being at the same height. as the second pointy. So I might I might change it to be halfway up. I'm gonna put it as 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 is done on the drawing for now actually. So pipe one it's at minus five. Height seven, height eight. Yeah, height 8, and we're at minus 13, aren't we? Well, those th these would have to be on outriggers as well. So let's put minus 5.5 to be that little bit outrigged, and we'll do pipe 6 at the same time, because it is equal and opposite, minus 13. Uh, so pipe three and pipe four uh, are going right at the base of the pipe on the outside. So let's look at point T three minus two point one four. Let's go minus two point six four. Minus 2.64 and 2.64 at a height of 9, at a height of 10. Uh, 
and we are at minus 13. Yes. Okay. That looks good. So we've done pipe 1, 3, 4, and 6. Uh, let's do 7, 9, 10, and 12, which is pretty much the same again, just mirrored to be on the floor. So set that to minus 5.5. Minus 2.64, 2.64, and a height of 7. I've screwed that up. 8, that's 1. 7, 5, 4, 4? Yeah, 4. So that one's at 4 as well. So these are at 3? No, these are set on the floor. So 1.5. And everything is upside down. Well, those ones are hanging. Do I want to keep those hanging? I think I want to flip them. Yeah. So that means these need to go 3.5. 3.5, because when it flips, it's going to add that extra half a meter. 180. There we go. These eight are going to flip as well. And these are all going to be at a height of 1.5. These are going to be uh, minus 5.5 plus 5.5. And then the others are spread out kind of not quite because they're going in between the pointies at the same time so i ideally oh everything's at minus 12 as well oh oh so many things where are the pointies minus seven so let's make those minus seven uh, blah, blah, blah. floor pointies minus 9.5 so maybe that should be minus eight no, I think that needs to be minus 9, minus 10. I think it needs to be minus 10.5. Okay, that looks good. This is going to be minus 8. Minus 8.25. Something like that. Let's make that minus 10.75. That looks good. So that's going to be minus 10.75. That's going to be minus 8.25. So now it's just these four along the front which need to get spaced. These four here that need to get spaced. Uh, one here, two in the middle, and then one there. They're at the front of the stage, it's good, they're at the right height, so let's just play around. Minus 3, minus 3.5, minus 4, minus 3.75. So about in between. So let's make that 3.75. So then these will have to be minus 1. Let's go minus 1 through 1. Ooh, not quite, minus 0.75. 0.75. It's roughly like that. I could probably spread them a bit nicer. But for now, I'm going to go with that. <laughs> well, no, wait, let's... I'm going to try and work this out. Uh, so we're starting at minus 5.5. We're finishing at 5.5. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 gaps. So... The difference, get a calculator, aka my phone. So the difference should be 11 divided by 7, I think, which is going to be a really nice number. 1.57, I think, should be the di distance between each one. So uh, do, 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 I'm going to keep needing this calculator. Minus 
Actually, no, we can do it with normal positive numbers. 1.57. So that first spot should be at 3.93. And the next one, minus 1.57, minus 1.57, those are at 0. Point, ooh, minus 0. 0.79 through 0. 0.79. And then the pointies should be sitting at 2.36. Minus 2.36 through 2.36. There we go. Now everything's nice and spread along the front of that stage. I might have these angling up maybe to meet with that. But we're going to be, it's, I'm going to be editing on the fly. Going to be changing things as we go, I think. So that's all the spots and pointies in. Now I've got a few washes to put in. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've only got six washes drawn in, which isn't a lot. There are a lot of beams going on. Uh, now, which wash is a nice wash to use? I do have some favorites. I do like the BI, but you can't see it at all in the visualizer. And the spider's pretty good because the spider does do a really nice tight beam. And you get the whole spider effect, but again, you can't see that in the visualizer either. Let's have a look what I want. Choose head. Be cool if you could filter by type but that would be more for a designer as opposed to running a show, which wouldn't be as important. Um, what can I use from Broby? Hmm. What's a nice wash? Could do the BMFL wash. quite like having pixel control of stuff though. Uh, I don't know. Screw it. Let's just go for the spider. Let's just do the spider. Uh, I think I do mode 6 normally because that's got shapes in it. I think that's the mode I normally use. Um, so how many was it? There was six, I believe. So patch it, six. Done. In. And they are in my viz. Again, automatically attached to a pipe. Don't want that. Uh, so where are they attached? I've got four on that main truss. Set main truss. And then there's one on pipe two and pipe five. Pipe two, pipe five. So the main truss, before I accidentally put them on the front truss, is at minus nine. How oh, they're sitting underneath the floor again. Just put them in the middle, spread them so I can see them. So the ones on that top truss, that's what about minus 5.5, .5. that's at 5.5-ish. Uh, if I do this, it might put them perfectly in between. That could work out pretty nicely. What height is that? That is at 10. Okay. I'll take that, I think. Just so you can see the what I'm looking at. There's the 
wash, 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 wash. And then putting two, one on this bit of pipe here, about at this same level, and one on this pipe here, at about this level. Probably on the outer side again. So we've got them attached. Pipe two, pipe five. Pipe two is, what, have I got? what else have I got attached to pipe two? Minus 3.57, so we'll go minus 4.07. Minus 4.07 and 4.07 at a height of 8, a height of 9. And at minus 13, I think it should be. Okay, I think that's the washes done. Now, let's put these blinders in. So for blinders, I'm just going to put in, I think you can put in them as generic blinder, or you can just put them in as generic dimmer. So if you go to choose head, if we go to all, type generic, takes us to generic, and then you can see they've put in blinder here for generic blinder. It's, it gives you a couple modes to choose from. Don't actually know the difference between these two. One in brackets, one or two. Two would be, uh, yeah, I might have some, let's put in some two channel blinders. So I've only put three in. Maybe that'll change later. It would be nice to have some blinders on the floor, potentially. Maybe just sitting, maybe one back here, and one back here. Or you could have sitting just underneath these lights. But it starts to get a bit OTT with blinders at that point. And really as well, I think these, these uprights would probably be Trust towers as opposed to scaff. Especially seeing as you're putting a big ass mover on the side like that. Uh, so, but let's ignore that for now. Let's forget about it. Yeah, I might add some more blinders for the floor. Where's my pen? No idea. Oh well, I'll just put them in. So we've got three on the front truss. Oh, I might put two on the back truss as well. Okay, so two on back, three on front, two on floor. Seven total. So we've chosen it, generic blinder, two channel, patch it, let's go seven. Blinder, 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 blinder. Ah, good. They're set as independent by default. Independent is what you want. So you can uh, you can control the two channels separately. Because if it's independent, that means they've probably nicely got... Instead of being an awkward thing in the intensity window, where you have the second dimmer channel, usually on this encoder, it looks like it's set up as a duplicated element kind of thing. So if we go, if we look at that, go into programmer, you can see that, yeah, that's dim. So that'd be dim one. This is dim two. So we can set that to zero. Or set that to 100. And have the other one Ooh. at zero. And do cool stuff like that. But we're, we're putting lights in position now, so let's move some lights. I want these to be on the main truss, these to be on the back truss, and these are going to be on the floor stage. 
Oh, you can see them just clipping through the ground right there. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was on the wrong, I was showing the wrong thing for about five minutes there. Oh, whoops. Uh, okay. So main truss, probably going to be over rigging, so you don't have to worry about them getting in the way of other lights. Let's go minus four through four. And at a height of 13. Where are they? Minus 12, 13, maybe they're too high. Oh, right. They're just pointing down. Uh, I'm going to have to locate them so I can see what which way they're pointing. Patch. Let's move them around. So we're at minus four through four on the fr whoa on the front truss. They need to be at minus ten. My mistake again. Minus nine. Minus eight point five. A little bit higher. Ten point. Five maybe. Whoa. <laughs> we just put them a kilometer up in the air and now they're blinding everything. Ninety, wrong way. Minus sixty-five. Oh, that's a shame. They only come up as a two cell. I was expecting a nice four cell. Oh well. That's all right though. Pointing down at the audience. Minus four, zero, zero. So I'm going to put these in between 10.5, minus 13, and minus 65. Some lovely blinds. Uh, the ones on the floor are going to go at probably a minus four through four again. At a height of 1.5. And they're going to be tilted up. So minus 65 brought them that way. So I want to go, I think, minus 125. That's the last two. Turn them on. See where they're pointing. Oh, that's a pretty good guess. I think I'm going to go minus 120. And we're going to put them a little bit more in between those. And in real life, they'd be sitting a little bit higher. Okay, so that's blinders, spots, washes, and pointies slash beams in. Now, there's just atomics and LED buttons to do. This is looking like quite a busy stage. There's a lot of lights. Okay. So we go back to view heads. Choose head. Martin. Oh, oh, that's handy. Oh, LED 3000. No, I just want the normal one. Let's go to filter live. So I can find it a bit easier. Martin. There we go. Oh, it was probably right beside it. I was probably being an idiot and missed it. So we want four channel. 
uh, just to show you that for one channel, I think, oh God. Uh, one channel is just intensity, and I think it has a fixed fixed rate and duration. I think it's just literally on and doing quite a quite a fast strobe. Uh, and three channel, you get control of intensity, duration, and rate. Four channel is the uh, channel mode where you've got the effects in it as well, where you can choose it to do lightning or, or pulses, I think. I've never actually used anything other than 4-channel. And I've had a play with the 4-channel effects a, a little bit, but usually you know, I've only ever done programming of intensity, rate, and duration. I've never really used that effects channel. But do it anyway. If someone... if if someone can show me an example of someone using that effects channel to for, for really good use, that would be really cool to see. So let's count how many have I got. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, Atomics, patch it, 16. There we go. Uh, view, viz, blinders, atomics. So the first four are going on the main truss. I might split that actually. I'll have two on the back truss, two on the main truss. And then we've got them going from pipe one through to 12. I wonder if you type four. Ooh, okay. So one does stage two, room three, four, five. Awesome. Oh, if I put five through 17. Ooh. Oh, it'd be five through 16, wouldn't it? Five through sixteen. Oh, not quite. I don't know. Wait, what's six? If five is pipe one, six is invalid. One, two, three. What's one? Stage. What's two? Oh, two is room. That's weird. Okay, five, six, invalid, seven, eight, uh, that's eight, nine, nine is invalid, <laughs> ten is invalid, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Seventeen is invalid, eighteen is invalid, nineteen is invalid. What is with that? Uh, is this right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Am I missing one? Have I done it wrong? I've done it wrong. Oh, that's 5, 6, 7, uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, invalid, 18, 19, 20, oh, 20, 21. Okay, things are attached. Let's move them around, yay. Back truss, we'll go, what have we got up on our trusses? Back truss can have two on the outer, like one there, one there. Front truss can have one there and one there. And then the other 12, just wherever they can fit, pretty much. So back truss, we will go minus four through four, maybe. Let's see where they go. Height of 11, height of 10, height of 
perfect ish at minus 13 not quite perfect with that height then that's what I want roughly where they want to be but this might not have to be minus 12.5 yeah kind of sitting just in front off of that chord I bet they're pointing down though find out later so height 10 uh, these will be minus 9.5 minus 8.5 maybe yeah minus 8.5 and spread at uh, minus 2 through 2 And then let's do these pipes. So they're going, if I'm having LED strips rigged onto the pipe, then I want these atomics to be, I'll probably have these atomics going the opposite side of that there, one there, and then one there as well, something like that. Yeah, so minus, uh, minus 13, the height was, let's put them at five, uh, 7 for now, uh, and then where are these, see where those pointies were, minus 5, minus 2.14, uh, atomic, minus 5, through minus 2.14, Okay, but now they all need to shift slightly to the right. So really, I want minus 4.5 through minus 1.64. There we go. And I want that to be uh, 7.5. So that would be 8.5, 9.5. Perfect. So now we can just flip that. So that would be 9.5. 8.5, 7.5 at minus 13, uh, and 1.64 through 4.5. Whoop, fucked up. 1.64 through 4.5. Sweet. Got our atomic sitting there. Now, to do the ones on the pipes below that, it's going to be pretty much the same. So minus 4.5 through minus 1.64. 1.64 through 4.5. Uh, let's put these all at this kind of height. So that's going to be four, three, two, two, three, four. This would be perfect to have a nice big old bit of video wall right in the middle. Or maybe like a circular bit of truss or something. I don't know, but I think that's those put in. So let's give those atomics a flash. Ooh, that intensity works weirdly. Beam, so strobe rate, there we go. We can see some cool stuff happening. But yeah, let's just put them on like that to see where we're, we're pointing. And we will tilt them all up as normal. And they would probably actually be flipped 90 degrees so they're vertical as well. So our rotation 
the main truss ones are going to be pointing somewhat down. So that's the wrong way. I think that's the right. So that's going minus 70. Uh, if I'm having these ones straight out, then that means I think I want to go, uh, if I put them at minus 90, all right, so we can see they're pointing straight out at me now, and then rotate them. Not that way. Oh, I can never figure out this stuff properly. Maybe everything needs to be at 90. Oh, now if I do that and then put those at night. No. Zero. Minus 90. 180. And I feel like, I always feel like this is a bug because I just want them to spin in the way that is facing me, which I would think would be the Z axis. But apparently not. 90, 180. That's spinning around the Y axis. So if I spin the Y axis, but that's also spinning around the Y axis. Oh, there we go. Uh, 270? Normal? Yeah, there we go. Okay. That's one way of doing it, just brute force it. Didn't even need to put 180 in there. All right. Are these at the right location? Yes. I think, I think that's it for those. And now just to chuck those LED buttons on. So I might go for the old X4 bars because those are pretty popular at the moment. Surprised I didn't do the JDC ones for strobes, but you can't beat a well, you can beat a Martin Atomic. No, I don't think you can. It's it's more if you want a more analog, like natural xenon tube kind of look, then Martin, Martin Atomic's the way to go. Though the JDC one does come close to it with its strip in the middle it does look pretty good and, and it has so much more with having the different LED backlight the effects you can run within the individual pixels and having a tilt uh, good lights they're, they're pretty decent uh, let us put in some of these X4 bars then see how that goes Hopefully the stream's working all right for everyone watching. I don't know, hopefully it's working at 1080p all right. I did try and test it fairly thoroughly to try and get it working quite nicely. But uh, let, let me know if, if something's um, not working right. And and also, the one of the main ideas of doing this was to get some questions coming in so I can help anyone out with some generic um, simple bits of programming. I know I'm just going through the visualizer at the moment, pretty much just because I'm just patching everything in. But yeah, keep any kind of question coming in and I'll, I'll get around to it and maybe do it, do it in the next video as well. Uh, what I have forgotten is to patch some hazer and smoke. So I'll do that now whilst I remember. Let's go. I wonder in live, does it have Blizzard Chauvet? Doesn't have, uh, what's the name of the people? Look, look Solutions who make the unique. Do they have Tour Factory in here? Is that the name of the guys who make the, um, uh, what was that smoke machine called? Tour Factory Smoke Machine 2 or something. 
tool tool pro smoke factory smoke factory was the name of the unit tour yeah smoke factory tour hazer that was it okay let's patch two of them patch it two done we won't bother about putting them in the viz even though i can see that they have appeared uh sorry i was on the wrong screen again there fool uh so yeah tour hazer two by smoke factory uh, and we will put in a smoke machine or two smoke machines as well but those those are pretty much always I've never seen one with more than one channel so I'm just gonna put them in as generic generic dimmers generic dimmer patch it let's pretend we got two of those and we will name it smoke machine oh, let's get my capitalization right smoke machine All right, now let's just get the those X4 bars in. So I'm going to guess, let's go back into the patch, see how long those bars were that I put in. Those pipes were three meters, two meters, one meter. The, the X420 bar, I can't remember how long it is. Let's just put them in and see what happens. So we'll we'll put in at least twelve. One for each bar. Might be Yeah, one for each bar would probably be alright. Even that'll probably be too much for the small one meter bars actually. So maybe maybe two and one. Two on the outer ones. One on the middle. Let's see how it fits. View heads, choose head. GLP. Uh, impression X4 bar 20. What does CWWW mean? CWWW. Don't know. And it's not got all that many channels. Um, but the X bar 20. I could put some X bar 10s in there in the in the smaller areas but let's go x bar 20 uh single pixel so all these different modes i can uh, just about explain what they do i think compress 20 channels that'll just be oh god it's gone no choose gop x420 okay so compress 20 that would be some simplistic thing where you've it will give you some simple stuff you can actually let's let's click it and go edit head so we can see what's in there so channel one and two it's reserved so that's there's nothing going on there tilt so you've got tilt control you've got a color which probably color macro maybe don't know might have to check the manual for that but it, i mean if if it was a color macro you might normally see it in these in the ranges view to see what colors it is but sometimes campuses don't add every color from the color color macro because it would be like having to input 100 different lines of information into here because every color will have maybe only three channels for it so it's it's easier just to put uh, and then you, you can uh, they're just like figure it out yourselves so red green blue white shutter dimmer uh color temperature set cold three oh this so this must be where you just have a simple effect so you can set the color of the effects i guess with this channel star effects a pattern zoom yeah so you just got some simple stuff let's have a look at what the so D pix means double pixel, so it'll be linking every two pixels. You won't have individual control of every pixel. You'll just have every two pixels. D pix H uh, is for high resolution, so that'll be uh, controlling double pixels uh, with 16-bit dimmer information. I'm guessing it's 16-bit dimmer. Double pix V dim VD2. Oh, so double pixel 
with virtual dimmer. I think, yeah, not in high res, not, not, yeah. So high res 35, not sure. These are going to be like, you know, standard stuff like the compact, but with a bit more going on. So single pixel will be controlling single pixel, single pix H, single pixel with 16 bit dimmer. S pix H with V dim is, is the V dim, uh, from Camsys added on top. So I'm going to put it in, in SPIX H, not only because it's the most channels, but you get the VDIMs automatically with it. So yeah, you can see you've got everything here, everything. And, but, but you don't have those channels where it does a pre-made macro for you. So all your effects you're creating yourself. So let's go patch that. So I think one, two, let's go 12 for now. So you can see that it has here. If I click that, oh, if you click that, it doesn't show the VDIMs that are associated with it. And also it'd be cool if you could arrange these in different orders, not just the order in which you patch them, like alphabetical or number. I know in, a, in the latest beta version, it will show you how many of each are there, but I'm only running 1831 because uh, I'd like to stick on the alphas. So scroll down, let's go back to the oh, scroll. So it's patched in the generic V dimmer with 20 elements with the same head number as the X bar that it's associated with. But all of these elements are set to duplicate, which is not what you want if you want to have individual control. So if you set them all to independent, you now have independent control of every pixel. So let's get them moved into place. Uh, view viz, viz heads. Scroll down. These, uh, let's just remove them from there. If you remove fixtures from the viz, it doesn't take them out of your whole patch. You can see they're still there. It's just when you take them out of the viz. So let's assign these to, uh, we were just going one per pipe, wasn't it? So five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine is invalid. <laughs> 10 is invalid. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, I think 18 and 19 are both invalid. Oh no, 19 isn't invalid. 20, 21. Let's move these so we can see them. Minus three, three, three. Oh, interesting place it decides to put them. Oh, I've put in, I've put that on the wrong column really. Minus three through three. A whole line of X bars. Going about minus 13. Does that sit right on line with the bar? Yeah, so I'm gonna want them to be a little bit in front. Minus 12.8. That's a bit better. Now let's see what orientation they're in. Locate, so they're pointing down, patch. Am I gonna have the same amount of fun with this? Okay, yeah, I think that's pointing at me. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, but we wanted them vertical, so I think the trick we found was to make them do the same as the atomics. Change that, 90. Change that to minus 90. 
There we go. So they're all vertical now. And pointing straight out. Whoop de doo. So pipe one was at minus five. Uh, where is everything else? Pointy minus five, two point one four. Minus five through two point one four. Oh, uh, minus two point one four. Minus five through minus two point one four. Two point one four through five. Minus five through minus two point one four. Oh, minus 5 through minus 2.14, 2.14 through 5. Okay, now let's move them up and down. So 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, uh, let's make, let's move that there, make that, uh, eight, so we've got two there, three point, uh, minus 3.57, six, 8.5, or nine, Um, I'm kind of lacking the whole because they can tilt and putting them vertical they're just going to be tilting straight out but it could still be a cool effect it is kind of better to have them tilting so that they could give a curtain which comes down over the stage as opposed to doing them like this which is better but you could still do this I'm going to do it anyway. I could probably fit three. could probably fit three on this bar if I move them up. Then I could have three, two, one. I'm going to, I'm going to keep it this way though for now. Uh, and see how that goes. 3.57. Those can be at five. Minus five, minus three point five seven, three point five seven, five. So that's nine eight nine. So nine eight. Oh no, I think I want to go nine eight. Oh, nine eight nine. Oh no. Oh, they're all attached to different pipes. That needs to be five seven. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah. One, two, three, four, twelve, thirteen, thirteen. Uh, at a height of nine, eight, nine, nine, eight, nine. I'll just swap that and that. So now my units go one, two, three. Four, five, six. And that's the right distance. Yeah. Okay, now just the bottom ones. I've got them spread out correctly width wise. The heights are a bit different. So we go two or three, two point five. Oh, and they all need to come forward about a meter. Minus eleven point eight. There we go. Let's go 3.5, so number 2 can be below 2.5, and then 2.5, 3.5, 2.5. All right. I think our rig is done. I think we're fully made. We just need to check all of our all of our pans and tilts and directions that everything is facing is correct. And then once we've done that, 
we can get to programming and actually doing some more fun stuff. Just going to get rid of that. I could read it. There's, there's so much to do. There's, you've got, got plans to make, execute windows to make. Are all my macros here? Well, there's a few. They're all pretty... They're not applicable to any of this stuff, though. Uh, but right, that's that done. If anyone's watching, get some, get some questions in uh, when I start for when I start programming. Uh, I'm just going to take a quick break uh, and have go make a cup of tea. But that's a, that's a solid amount of time getting some lights in. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty good at the moment. I think we're in a good place. Uh, sorry, just got a lovely cup of tea. Right, let's get whatever's happening next happening. Um, what are we even doing? Right, we got a rig. We've got uh, a load of groups auto created. We've got some generic positions in there. All of, all of these uh, palettes have been auto created from when you go in, or from in the patch window. Whenever you patch something the auto palette icon here. You can set it to auto create palettes for all of these things and it will do that for you. I think there's something in the setup window where you can get it to uh, do something to do with it. Um, oh, we're back up. Mm. Recruit palettes? No. Undo. I'm not sure where it is, but I'm. I was sure that there was there was something in there where you could change. I might be thinking of Avo. I don't know. But if you want, I can show you through uh, how I do all my setup window stuff to make it work nicely for me. Um, but let's let's for now just. Let's set our 3D view to go dark. So there you do that from in the 3D window. I know you can't really see it. Uh, you can't really see it from the way I've kind of linked my window. But if you in the 3D in Magic Qviz on the top bar, if you click 3D view and click dark then voila, there's no dark. And if you want to change exactly how dark dark is, you can go into settings in there and you can change uh, the room brightness there and your beam brightness as well. But I like to have it almost pitch black so you can just about see your fixtures. So let's have that. And I think first we're just gonna create a load of color palettes. Actually no, what we need to do first is go through all of the uh, Go through the whole rig and make sure everything's tilting and panning the way we want it to. So, how I like my pan and tilts to go is uh, I like it so that when I let's tighten those beams so we can see what's happening, I like it so that when I move my uh, tilt encoder up, everything comes out like that and down to go back in like that. So that this is that's how I like it, and that's moving it right. Everything goes right, left. Everything goes goes left. So the pointies are all as I like them. So let's check these seniuses. Locate. Let's tighten them up. Ooh, oh, they are automatically tight. Position. So fixtures on the floor are doing the right thing, uh, but they are going the wrong way that so at the moment everything should be out and pointing right so now I should just go can just go into the patch find my senior spots tilt invert everything on the top so now everything on the top is going the right way around everything at the bottom I just need to pan invert 
And there we go. Now everything is to panning and tilting the right way. Senior spots. Uh, let's see what's next. So those are good. Those are good. Let's have a look at my spiders. Locate. Position. Uh, okay, so that's the wrong way. Uh, that is the right way. So we just need to flip my tilts. Enter. Oh. Enter, enter. Oh, one handed. Did not work. My keyboard is getting rough as well, which does not help. Uh, so now those are all good. They are going up, they're going left, they're going right. Excellent. Uh, blinders. Uh, actually, no, I was doing it from the groups window. That was good, good, good. Blinders don't move. Atomics don't move. Tool hazer and dimmer. I'm actually going to remind myself what that is because that is smoke machines. Uh, and these X4 bars, they only have tilt and they're rigged vertically. So they're going to, I'm going to have to decide now what I kind of want them to do. Oh, that's bright. Now, if I change the beam to be narrow, yeah, that's going to help me see them. I might, for now, I'm going to keep them on, uh, I'm going to keep them doing what they are now, because you can set, there's a setting where you can change it so that you don't see beams drawn from fixtures with multiple heads, with multiple elements. Which helps because you can get blinded by them quite quickly. But just for now, I'm going to keep it like this. So, or well, at least they are, they're all in sync. So I think I'm going to, I think they are going the wrong way from what I want. Because I'm moving my encoder to the right and they're going all left. So I'm going to flip all of those. In X4 bars. Can I do this? Yes. Awesome. Clear. All right, so now everything, oh, not those, all my movers are doing just what I want. Everything's blinding, oh my God. Uh, oh, I wonder if I can change, oh, there's a way, can you, can I make it so that those X4 bars respond to the pan encoder. I could edit it in the head. I could change what encoder they sit on. There might be a way in the patch to swap. Yeah. So I think if you do that, they will now be moved by... No, I think swap, swap just flips which way around the pixels go. So I go locate and position. Yeah, they're responding to tilt. Yeah, I think if I wanted to make them respond to pan, then I'd have to edit it in the head. I might just do that now, just to show everyone how to do that. Uh, and then I could save it as a new head for me. So... You want to make sure you've got the head selected in the in the patch window. So just to make sure that you can highlight it, hold shift and go edit current head. So now you're into the head editor. So if we go into view channels, I believe if we just change this to be, uh, wow, what? If I, I double clicked on that and that's got iris highlighted. That's interesting. So I think attribute number. I think what we would want to do is just change what encoder it sits on. P1X, P1X. I 
think, because we still want to call it tilt. Let's try it. Save as uh, GLP. I'll just copy what it says at the top so that it doesn't become a mess in the folder file structure. X4 bar 20 underscore S picks H V dim. Oh, oh God. S picks V dim. Oh, it's S picks H. S picks H V dim pan. V dim pan. Would I need to change the mode in the other window? No, I'm going to cancel that. I'm just going to go save head and then I can just change it back because all I've changed is literally that. So I'm going to go save head. Overwrite, yes. Now let's have a look. Position. Okay, yeah, so tilt is now on that encoder, which is the encoder for pan. So now if I select everything, uh, do I have tight zoom on my auto? Zoom now. Turn everything on. It's so bright. <laughs> Pan. Oh, no. Oh, I've moved my window. Where's my window gone? Yeah, everything pans, but it won't... Even though I'm moving that same encoder that everything is on... Yeah, I would have to change the actual function, I'd have to say it is actually pan instead of just moving what encoder it's on. So I'm going to try that. This is very unnecessary. Pan. Pan. Save. So now select the unit. Let's turn them up a little bit. Not too much that it blinds everybody in the universe again. Wow. Wow, that's incredible. Oh my god. So, seeing as I've renamed, I've changed it to a pan attribute in the visualizer, now they are, at, they are literally panning. So, a hack, oh god, I've got shift highlighted. That's, that's pretty amazing. If you want to custom make a head with a baton with pan and tilt, <laughs> that's how you do that. Wow. Shame you can't do what I'm trying to do. I don't think so. If anyone knows how you can get it to respond to the pan encoder, but for it to actually still tilt, that'd be good to know. It's not the end of the world at all, really, though. Let's, re let's revert everything back to the way it was. It's not really, I guess it's not really designed to to do something like that. Um, so we're in patch, edit head, <laughs> that's so funny, tilt, tilt, yeah. P1, this encoder column here is referring to which encoder your attribute is on. So P1 is position page one, 
encode a Y. Uh, for example, uh, oh, B3A is beam page three encoder A. Uh, so the save head, so everything's back to normal. <laughs> head file version uses seven now. Brilliant. That it's it's gonna work just as normal. Okay. Turn that brightness well down. Oh god. Just blinds. Position tilt. Okay, clear. Okay, so everything's going in the same direction that we want everything to go. Uh, let's organize these groups just a little bit. I like to get rid of my kind of non-mover stuff down a bit out of the way. These are probably going to disappear pretty quickly. Let's re let's move. Uh, we want to go spot beam wash. I would say spot beam wash, and then I'll have blinders and atomics over here, and LED stuff there. So right, so clicking on that, you can see that we've got palettes for all of this well we've, we've I'm only going to worry about color palettes at the moment so you can see it's got the pre-generated color palettes there for that we've got pointy color palettes oh that's weird cyan and pink have been put in that order cyan isn't appearing there spider has got those and that's strange that the pointy hasn't had palettes created for those two okay let's make a load of color palettes. Okay, let's see what these are initially. So it looks like all of these color palettes are only using CMY values here. And you can confirm that by going view palette, having a look at everything. So yeah, everything apart from the point E is just using CMY values. So what I like to do for fixtures that have got a color wheel and also uh, CMY or RGB, usually it's only CMY, but I'll have two different palettes for white. I'll have a palette which is white CMY and a palette which is white on the color wheel. Uh, and I'll, I'll have them separated out. So I'll have uh, CMY slash RGB stuff at the top and then the same colors doubled up down here, but it would all be color wheel stuff. So for example, the pointies wouldn't, won't have any palettes up in this little region. I'll just have the color palettes there. That way, uh, you can lay, you can lay out your color wheel palettes. As, so they're right next to each other. So, you know, when you do a color chase, you know you're going to jump from one color straight to the next instead of flicking right through the color wheel to get to the next one. Um, well, although thinking about it now, it, be it would become complicated once you've gotten more than one kind of color wheel going on because they'll be arranged in slightly different orders. But in this case, well, we do have two fixtures with color wheels. The senior spot is a color wheel and the pointy has got a color wheel. But let's let's crack on. Um, I don't actually want any of these, so I'm gonna get rid of them all. So I'm going to locate my spots. Let's make this room go dark, and let's go to color. Things, everything's located, so all of this color information is going to be in these cues that I make. So I'm actually going to go into the programmer and take out the color wheel information. So now I've got just the CMY values active. That's upsetting that it adds a multicolor. 
icon for that. Oh well. So that's my white. So now let's make red. It's a lovely red. Hey, it adds red there. So C means uh, it's just color information in that palette. With the L, the L is saying it's linked. So linked means that this palette is referring to another palette. So this palette has this information new in it, but these bits of information are coming from the previous palette here. So if I were to change this palette, it would also change this palette because they're linked. So to, if you don't want that to happen, you can highlight the palette, hold shift, and go unlink palette. If you've got a lot of palettes which are linked, which I probably will do in a moment, if you go into view palette, you can see unlink palette is up here, but if you hold shift, it, you can click unlink all palettes, and then all of your palettes will be unlinked, which is nice and handy if things are like just not working. Okay, let's make a amber slash orange. There we go. Record that there. That's my orange. Here's my yellow. Uh, and then I like to create... I don't like to go for the lime greeny color. I don't think I've really ever used that. I normally just go straight for a green. And then I'll jump to like a kind of aqua, aqua e, sea foamy green, like that. And then to cyan. And then we'll go to a nice blue. And then we'll go to a dark blue. And then a nice darkish UV purple color. And then full magenta. And then kind of a hot pink. And then that brings us right back around to red in the color wheel. So then after that, I like to, I will choose a CTO and a CTB. If I go into color mix, actually I, I know how to do it pretty well in RGB values. I don't actually know it as nicely when I'm doing it with CMY. So what you can do, if you know it, if, you, if you're like me, then you can go color mode, go RGB, and now it, will, it has everything inverted so that you can put in RGB values and it will it will transform it into CMY for you. So I like to, uh, huh, don't want color mix. I like to pick a, my amber and then I'll just slowly add some blue, maybe get some more green in there until I've got a color that's looking like warm white. That's looking pretty warm white. Obviously completely different in the real world, so you'll have to in the real world update all of these palettes to to match. So now if I go to blue and then I start adding a load of red, maybe a tint more green, then I've got a really cold blue. Really cold white blue. You know what I mean? So that's my CTO and my CTB. Uh, I'll normally put a, a black in as well. Man, I really wish the PC wing had the soft buttons. So I'll put in black. And then I normally put in maybe another kind of pink. Let's go back to color mode CMY. 
get some pastel shades going on. So a light magenta. Actually, let's go back to RGB. I know RGB so much more. There we go. There's a pink. And then sometimes like a light, I've, you've got a light orange, light blue, light red in essential, essentially. Light green is kind of, mm, it can't hurt to put in a light green. So if I do this, Take that out. Oh. Actually, let's go for more of a light purple. It's like a nice lavender. It's really close to pink though. But it's it's something. And then screw it. Put light green in. Put some pukey light green. Mmm. Yeah, horrible. Okay, now you can see pretty much all of these palettes have got a little L saying they're linked. So I'm going to go view palette. You can see it's referencing palette 17 unlink all palettes and now now we've got all our palettes are very standalone and to change this icon here to change this icon to be a nice white if you hold shift click set and then you can go in and pick a white yeah uh, yeah that's pretty white Right, white, red, oh, that doesn't work. You can't click set, set, red, set, orange, yellow, green, uh, C. Blue, dark blue, UV, magenta, hot pink. Have I got this right? Oh no, I missed one. Oh, it was cyan. Cyan, yes. Blue, yes. Dark blue, yes. UV, yes. Magenta, yes. Hot pink, yes. Uh, CTO. CTB, black, what is this, pink, lavender, light green, L lick, lick green, light green, there we go. Uh, for fun, just for fun, let's just put these on my first fader here. So we've got white, red, orange, yellow, green, sea green, cyan, blue, dark blue, UV, magenta, hot pink, CTO, CTB, 
black, pink, lavender, light green. Excellent. So now let's put those values, or let's make some more palettes for the color wheel. What have we got in this color wheel? Not much. <laughs> really not much. Wow. So I brought up that window by clicking and holding on that button. Uh, and on the, on the console you would press and hold the soft palette and it will, it will disappear once you let go of that button, but in the PC version it stays because you can't have like two mouses. So let's go white. I'll put that right down to zero. So that's white, dark red, blue. Ah, oh, this is annoying that it's not keeping any of these icons. Half green, green, half green. Gold, amber, another red, dark red and red, navy blue. What's the difference between navy blue and blue? Nothing icon wise. Uh, oh, I do like to put the color scroll in because you never know. Sometimes you need it. If someone puts it on uh, some Bee Gees, nothing but a color scroll. Everything color scrolling. So let's name these white, dark red. Oh, wrong one. Set blue. Uh, this is green. Half green. I'm just going to call that pink. Gold, amber. Uh, this is red. This is navy blue. This is scroll. Uh, all right, so that is the senior spots. They did have uh, a CTO channel here as well, but I, I noticed that I had all of that information at zero there, which is kind of what I want even for my CTO channel, partly because the visualizer doesn't visualize the CTO channel. And uh, sometimes, well, I know on the Roby 600, the CTO channel has little jumps at the very beginning where you're jumping between specific values. And when you've got a palette fade where your colors are fading between your values and you've got CTO values, you'll have little jumps in there, which doesn't look very nice. I forgot about my cup of tea. Mm. Warm. Um, so that's okay. Ooh, uh, so that's the colors for the senior spots done. I could put the half colors in, but I'm not going to. That could be another time. Or I could put them in. This is supposed to be a whole show far from scratch after all. Page one, page two. I'll come back to it. I'll see once I've got a different visualizer running what I can do with that. Okay. This could become messy. Pointy white. Uh, let me set these icon labels first. Nope. Cancel. Senior spot. Shift set white white shift set dark red that's pretty dark red shift set blue that's blue shift set green that one shift set pink Yeah, I'll go for that. Shift set, gold, amber. 
Shift set. Lighter red. Shift set. Navy blue. It's a nice. Pre there we go. Shift set. Scroll. Scroll can stay like that. Pointies. Color. White. Record. Update. Yes. Deep red. Uh, I'm gonna say navy blue is probably the same as dark blue. Yellow. Yeah, this is where it gets annoying because they got two different color wheels. Um, I think I might prioritize the point to seeing as its color wheel and the senior spot can flick between its CMY stuff. So I'm going to rearrange this window slightly. Navy blue pointy color. So we've got uh, deep blue, let's record yellow. Are you kidding me? It doesn't put the icon there. That's so silly. Where's yellow? It's vaguely yellow. I think that pointy yellow is quite ugly yellow as well. Green, oh, not set. Oh, go away. Oh, no. Point eight. Color. Green. Record. Set. Green. Shift set. Green. Record. Magenta. If you type it in beforehand, it should appear. There we go. Shift set. Uh, that one? Azure. Let's move that red. Record. Uh, Azure, I can't remember if that's the cyan or the normal blue. I think it's the normal blue. Shift set. Where's a more normal blue? There. So this is my light red. Record that. Yep. And we'll move that back here. Move the scroll out of the way. Ooh, conflict, conflict. Blue, blue. I think there's another blue coming. Dark green. Ooh, I'm going to record that on top of that green. Move that there. Amber. I'm going to call that gold amber. Probably. We'll find out later. Uh, here we go. There's blue. Yep. And orange. Record. Orange. That. Shift set. Orange. That one. And then we've got CTO. Record CTO. Shift set. Click. That looks CTOE. UV. Let's move the scroll out of the way. Record. UV. Shift. Set. Click. That one. And then back to white. And then. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm pretty sure that the first half, so you can see it, re it repeats, it goes through the wheel and then back to white. I think that first half is the wheel indexing, so you can get those split colors. The second half is snapping between the colors. So I think I've just recorded all the wrong stuff, but it actually won't take that long to redo it. White. Red. Blue, yellow, green, magenta, azure, oh, red, dark green, amber, blue, 
blue, orange, CTO, UV, uh, and then we get to a nice scroll. I'll put it roughly there. Uh, and pink is only in that senior spot. There's no pink for pointy. Although the pointy's magenta is always a bit disappointing for me, I've always thought. Or was that on the Sharpie? No, I think the Sharpie's got the better one. Okay. Now the spider, I think, has got color macros. Spider is annoying to program because you do have, you've got like three different modes of color. You've got the, there'll be the normal, just the normal it on color, which I think is in Camsys is just coming up as background. If I hit locate programmer, and you can see up here, We've got pan tilt, pan tilt. So background red, green, blue, white. Background, oh, that's background color temperature. And we've got color global colors. Oh, okay, that's the, the color mix. So by changing this E encoder, you can change what the value that you're highlighting is. God. Spiders it's got so many programming possibilities. Story pattern, background, virtual color. Okay, there you go. You got a load of virtual colors in there for the background. So that's the color macro channel essentially. Zoom flower, flower strobe, flower dimmer, flower white, blue, green, red. That's weird that that's the other way around. Dimmer, white, blue, green, red. So that's the colors for the flower effect. And then there should be colors for the pattern. Yeah. So pattern, red, white. So for the the channel where you set exactly what what kind of pattern you want to use on the spider, which all of it is very unnecessary for the the simple campus viz settings so just for now we're just going to pretend it's a normal wash with just using these normal background colors there so I'm going to clear out let's put the spiders on another fader we'll go fader 10 just because it's nearest to me and let's rotate them up. Oh, I cleared out. Pause. Okay. Let's see. Let's just see how the tightness of that beam. Ah, oh, yeah. That's so tight. And so wide. That's the great thing I love about the spider. Look how tight that beam is. Mmm. from that all the way out to that giving a huge wash so nice okay Let's stop having a heart attack over how well it does those colors Let's just let's let's get these in. Let's get some more colours on the go. Let's rearrange my microphone. Whew. Okay, clear. We are on so we can see what's going on. Mm, T. Alright. Spider. Colour. 
red, green, blue, white. So we'll record a full fat white with everything on. Oh no, no, what do we want to do with the color temperature? We want to keep that at zero, I reckon. Uh, I'm going to get rid of that out of the programmer because I'm just never going to touch that. We will keep background color temperature at zero. Uh, and yeah, we're going to record everything on as a white there. And then we're also going to record a, a just white, which doesn't come up on the viz, annoyingly, but it will give a much more cold, pure, like literally just that. Uh, you, you won't see any of the tiny little bits of red, green, and blue or different bits of color popping in anywhere. We're going to put that down here. We're going to call it just white. Oh, shift set. Gonna make that another white. So, white, let's make these just red. That is one thing that I think would be nice to get fixed if, because when you click here, when you, when you click the top half of that, it will go down and go down and around for all these first three. But for the white one, it's the opposite way around, which always catches me out. So, bug tracker, someone do that for me. So, record red there. Let's make a nice amber, something like that. Orange, yellow. Let's make green. C cyan blue dark blue let's make a UV boring this this bit's very dull you don't want to find yourself doing this too much. Gets pretty tedious. CTO. Uh, so I go back to my amber. Let's add some color in. Actually, we can probably just copy because it will come out the same. Uh, Seniors. So, oh, it's flipped. Oh, God, it's flipped. I'm not going to be able to do that. Something like this. Pretty good to me. I mean, you'd probably put in some white on that, but I'm not going to see it in this fish. This. Let's make CTB. Yeah, that's nice and cold. Uh, black. The black is useful as a palette for like if you were to do some color effects jumping from one color to another because it, it just acts as turning the light off. Red. Let's make a nice pink. Something like that. Uh, can I change this color to CMY? I can, and then if I look at this lavender, so 19.2 and about, about 20 and 50. So if I make that 20, make that about 50, take out that yellow, boom, got a nice lavender. Uh, let's change back to RGB. Make a light green. There we go. Record light green. Done. Let's unlink those palettes. 
A good, a good um, time to have linked palettes is if you, uh, when you're doing your gobo focuses, if you record two focus palettes, like a focus palette for gobo wheel one and a focus palette for gobo wheel two, and then have the gobos referencing that palette. So whenever you update those focus palettes, it will update all of your gobo palettes so you don't have to go through and change the focus in every single gobo palette you're just changing the focus for a specific like two palettes for gobo wheel one gobo wheel two and then it will just be everywhere okay right. so we've done colors for those those spider now I just need to do our X4 bars because none of those have colors in them. So let's do that as well. Really, I should have done it whilst selecting the spiders, but I like to make more work for myself, don't I? Let's take everything to zero. White is the other way round. Uh, everything to 100 now, so I know what's going on. Uh, so this is full white. This is just white. Take that out. Don't give a shit about that anymore. Now just red. Oh, I can't even see my light. Let's put them on. Oh, that is bright. Uh, if I hold fan and click two parts, Go to pause. Uh, oh, it's not on pan, it's on tilt. I tried to make it pan, but that didn't work. So now I'm going to make them all go left and right so I can see a bit nicer. Turn fan off, make this beam nice and tight. Uh, let's try and fan the background to me. I mean, it looks like it could be cool. Um, so we did white, we did red. Let's make amber. Oh, I've got pan. I've got fan selected. Ooh, doesn't like it. Orange. Let's make a sickly yellow. Sorry that this bit is so boring and there's not much going on. Welcome to programming lighting from scratch. C, cyan. That is a nice blue. Dark blue. UV, magenta, hot pink, uh, CTO, that's pretty good straight away off the bat. CTP, looks all right. There's black. It's pretty good, right? Pink. Kind of rushing it, aren't I? Uh, let's go back to CMY. Make that 20, that 50, that nothing. There's my lavender. Go back to RGB. Uh, we are making light green. Mmm, best color. All right, I think that's all the colors done. Unlink all palettes. Uh, great. Oh my God, it's really raining now. The joys of London. So what have we got on our faders right now? We've got, that's our spots. Let's put pointies on there. Oh, 
This rig is looking good. Pointies. That is our washes. Washes. Move there. And we'll put X4 bars on as well. X4 bar 20. Oh, those are just so blindy. Right, I think it's come to the point where I need to change these settings to make it... So in the settings window of Magic Viz settings, there's a tick box which says uh, draw beams from multi-element fixtures. I'm unticking that. So now... Oh, where are they? Where, where are they? That's not my X4 bars. That's washes, that's pointies, that's spots. Oh, it's got my pointies in there. So if we want to go and look into a queue, see what's going on, you can double click that. Well, that was a triple click, that isn't. Triple click takes you straight to view options of the queue stack. So if you double click, highlight the queue, go view queue, wow. Yeah, you can see I've accidentally got pointy information in here. So let's highlight that, go remove, done. So now we've just got the X4 bars as on. You can see the footprint they're making, but you don't see the beam. And you can make out the cells just about as well. If I switch you over, there you go. You can kind of see the cells are on. And you can see the beam they're making. Uh, zoom back out again. So, uh, 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 uh. is there a way in the Viz to recenter your camera? I feel like there is. I don't think I've properly learn about camera and stuff in the viz. That's something I've not really put much effort into doing. How are we looking overall? Put everything into a really tight zoom narrow. Is that as narrow as those spots go? It is. Oh, I guess they are spots. That's not as narrow as those pointies go, I know that for sure. And that's not as narrow as those beams go, as those washes go, I mean. Oh, how did that happen? It's not even... Oh, it's not even been included in it. No. And then, oh, that was stupid. X4 bars, Y to narrow. And then if I position locate everything... Position, tilt. Oh, everything comes out. Beautiful. Now the reason the spiders don't come all the way out as well is because they have a different tilt range from everything else. Which is why they're tilting like that when I move everything. This could look like a really good rig with a bit of programming and effort. What should I do first? There's a lot to do. Got all my colors in. We could get we could start getting some positions going. Could remove all those. 
because none of them are actually all that handy. Um, probably going to have to redo all of these as well. Partly just for layout. And who uses these gobo shakes anyway? I have seen them done before, but I never use them. So I'm going to take out the stuff that I know I'm definitely not going to be using. So I'm going to remove... Oh, what? That has got to be a bug, surely? Sorry, I was showing the wrong screen again. Um, so what I'm trying to do... Got all my units selected. I'm going to remove some of these uh, beam pallets. Why does it do that? So if you've just selected that, that is the bug for sure, right? So if you select, you can highlight some squares as normal, but if you use the scroll bar like that and then try and highlight some squares, it will scroll again. I wonder if that's been fixed. So let's not do that. Select everything. I'm not going to want these GoPro shakes. Remove. Uh, these I probably will keep sound active. I'm going to get rid of. Auto random, I'm going to get rid of. Uh, rotating gobos, I will keep. Gobo scroll, I think. No, I think these gobo scrolls relate to these gobos. Ugh. Move that there. Whole gobo rotates. I'm going to move those there. Remove. Oh, let's move. I want remove. Get rid of that. Uh, this is ro gobo rotation. Having shutter is good. Having zoom is good. This looks like Senius Unico Gobos and Senius Unico Iris, which I will probably keep as well. Okay. So, Spot Beam Wash X Force. Yeah, okay, so open gobo is referring to everything, but these gobos here are all for the pointies. It does get a little bit messy when you let it auto do pallets. So I may, I may come back to this at a later point. How long have I been going for? Almost three hours. That's pretty decent for having done what I've done. Yeah, I might call it there. Um, if you got, well, there's like no one in the in the there's like no one watching. But for anyone that finds this, send me send send some. Uh, Send some questions my way, and I'll happily go through and answer with examples of how to do what you're asking to do. Uh, and I will return with this show file at some later date, and we'll keep programming it and try and make a try and make a usable show file out of everything. Um, but for now, I think thank you for watching. <laughs>